massive day inside the NBA, and we have a loaded show here at NBA Now. Chicago Bulls, they already made one deal today with Alex Caruso heading to the Thunder for Josh Giddy. We'll touch on that more in depth, but also Zach Levine as he is being shopped around the NBA. Paul George, does he have no market in NBA free agency? And the closeout today's show is a major NBA draft trade in the top 10 going to happen between the Rockets and Memphis Grizzlies. We'll talk all about that in just a second. But make sure you are subscribed. And here are some reasons why you should subscribe to the channel. Weekly NBA videos, multiple, three plus really. Anything that you need around the NBA, we'll have it covered here. We're going to be live for the NBA draft on Wednesday and Thursday, both rounds. And we'll be live for the first two to four days of NBA free agency as well as it gets kicked off the following Sunday on the 30th. Hit that sub button and join the channel. All right, let's talk about the Bulls and Zach Levine now because the report out there is that the Bulls have floated out 15 different trade proposals to teams around the NBA regarding Zach Levine. Levine, who has been one of the most talented scorers in the NBA, is likely out of his way and out of Chicago. Now, didn't really expect this to happen this quickly, but we did get a breaking news story today in the form of Adrian Wojnarowski reporting that the Chicago Bulls have traded two-time all-defensive guard Alex Caruso to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Josh Giddy. We're going to tailor this conversation around the Bulls for today's show, but on a quick little note here, I love this move for the Thunder Crusoe fits perfectly and is an excellent defender to connect between Jalen Williams, Chet Holmgren, and SGA. Now, on this Chicago side of things, Woj also had this note that the Bulls have been determined to find a playmaker to replace Lonzo Ball. Lonzo said he's going to be able to return for this upcoming season, but maybe he gets dealt as well. And then Giddy comes with an all-star potential that would unlikely be realized with the Thunder because of the playmaking star power who already surround him. The Bulls will offer him an opportunity to have the ball in his hands and so much more freedom to pass and score. So it feels like the Chicago Bulls are going to go in a completely different direction. They move off Zach Levine, they're hoping to, which we'll talk about here in a second. They get rid of Caruso. Maybe they move rid of, get off Lonzo. Does DeRozan not come back? Maybe the Bulls completely go to a rebuild. But let's get back and tailor this conversation to Zach Levine because Casey Johnson had a report today that said Zach Levine's future isn't the only trade scenario that has been discussed. Even if sources said AK, the GM of the Bulls, has floated out as many as 15 proposals centered around the two-time All-Star guard to various teams including the Sacramento Kings, Orlando Magic, and Philadelphia 76ers. So one thing is abundantly clear when it comes to the Chicago Bulls. They want to get rid of Zach Levine. And that makes a lot of sense, right? He it really isn't fitting the timeline in Chicago. He's getting paid a boatload of money, and he might have one of the worst, if not the worst, contract in the entire NBA. I mean, you're paying this dude 43, 45.9, and 48.9 million dollars over the next three seasons. This contract is not good, and I don't think any really team is going to look at this contract and think, well, this is the one we want to take on. So when Chicago moves Zach Levine, they're likely going to have to attach a pick to it because of how bad the contract is. So that's really the question for Levine, who has battled injuries through the past four seasons and used to be one of the top scorers in the entire NBA. I mean, just three or four seasons ago, before Lonzo Ball got hurt with that knee injury, the Bulls were the top seed in the East through half the season, and Levine was averaging 27.4 points per game while shooting 50% from the field. Ever since then, it's been a slow decline for Levine, who had a torn ACL back when he was with the Timberwolves and then missed almost basically the entire 23-24 season with a foot injury, only played in 25 games, and even in those 25 games he played in, Levine still really struggled, only shooting 45% from the field and 35% from three, which clearly is the worst season out of his last four. And I want to bring it back to the reported teams that have interest in Zach Levine, or at least the Bulls have tried to contact them for a trade. The Magic, the Kings, and the 76ers. Now, when you think of which team possibly fits Zach Levine the best, I would probably go with Orlando or Philly. Orlando desperately needs some backcourt scoring and facilitating, playmaking, whatever you want to call it, 
to help out Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner. That duo in the front court for Orlando showed a lot of nice things in the postseason as well as the regular season. It just wasn't enough to beat the Cavs in the first round of the playoffs because their backcourt just wasn't consistent enough. I don't hate taking the flyer on Zach Levine if you're Orlando because you need the scoring, and what's the worst that can happen? You waste a year, you get Paolo and Franz continuing to improve, and then you move off that contract as it gets closer to an expiring. Like I think Orlando would be a top option here. Philly's intriguing too because they have a lot of cap space and they can take him in. I'm just wary of the fit with him and Tyrese Maxey in that backcourt. Let me know, though, what team should trade for Zach Levine? Which is the best fit? Who needs him the most? Give me a team down below in the comment section. All right, let's shift the conversation to Paul George because is there no market for the former All-NBA guard slash forward who could become a free agent if he opts out of his player option with the Clippers? Well, Brian Windhorst had this note earlier today. He said the Clippers could sign Paul George right now, this afternoon. But the fact that they are not seemingly reacting to what his market clearly is is something to pay attention to. And I get both sides of the coin in terms of the Paul George situation. If you're Los Angeles, do you move on from him? Do you not? Um, do you pay him that extension he wants? Like, I'm a PG guy. I like his game. The playoff things are, yeah, it's a concern. Um but man, do I do I think it would make sense for the Clippers to bring him back and for Brian Windhorst to make the note that he would expect there not to be as much interest as the fans and media might think. Like, I, I don't get that because I think there's a lot that he can bring to the table for a contending team already. But there has been remarks from Paul George that suggest he might not want to be in a winning situation and just wants to hoop on a big contract. He's also already 34 years old, so he can't sign an extension that's longer than three years. Why? Well, because of the new CBA, you can't sign a max extension that would take you past your 37-year-old season. Same reason Jimmy Butler could only sign a two-year extension in Miami because he's already 35. So he is a little bit older, not as young as many people might believe, and it might be some of the reasons why Paul George isn't maybe getting the interest that we want think on the open market, according to Windhorn. Continuing the conversation on Paul George in a second, but the NBA draft is less than a week away, and get your draft hats on sale right now. Chatsports.com slash draft hats is the best way to go get them. Curved, flap rim, snapback, they have all different styles in all 30 NBA teams. We're just showcasing the Warriors and Heat ones on the show today, but they have all 30 teams in all different types of styles, so get yours today. Chatsports.com slash draft hats, links in the description and comment. I still think there is going to be a market for Paul George. To me, he's just too good on both ends of the floor for teams not to be interested. And how big is the contract going to be? Could you get him for $48, $50 million? Maybe you think that's too much, but if you're on the precipice of becoming a championship team, why wouldn't Paul George be someone you added? Now, I will say this. I had these three teams as some clubs that should have interest in Paul George, even if he opts out of free agency. I have the 76ers, the Magic, and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, ironically enough, you're watching this video after a couple things came out here. One, the Thunder trade for Alex Caruso, and they're likely not going to be able to acquire Paul George in a sign-in trade or in free agency due to everybody they have to pay. Orlando, the same reasons why Zach Levine could be an option is Paul George. You get him there as a second or third option, ball handler, defender in the backcourt, that's a really good three that you have there in Paolo, Franz, and Paul George. And the 76ers, who made the most sense out of any team, but then it kind of got shut down. Like, Sham Sharanya had this note right before we went live on NBA Now, which is why you should subscribe to the channel, because we're going live on this show breaking down the NBA news and rumors, but Sham said the 76ers' interest in Paul George has significantly waned in recent days, and the franchise expects to be aggressive elsewhere with its salary cap flexibility and draft capital leading into next week's NBA draft. So they're pivoting. They're going elsewhere. They're not going to try to go after Paul George if we take this report at face value, which knocks down a suitor from PG-13, which either means he's going to sign for a lot more cheaper 
with the Los Angeles Clippers. Maybe he'll just opt into his contract, or maybe the Magic have a better chance at landing a big-time backcourt piece to help their young front court out. Prediction time, though. Will Paul George stay with the Los Angeles Clippers? If you think he's staying in LAC, type S for stay or type L for leave if you believe you he's going to opt out and test free agency. All right, let's close out today's show with some NBA draft talk. Is there an NBA trade that would shake up the entire draft potentially going down over the next couple of days? Well, there are rumors out there that the Grizzlies – could move up to the number three overall pick, which is currently owned by the Houston Rockets. And why would they do that, you ask? Well, the reports out there are that the Memphis Grizzlies absolutely love Donovan Klingon, the center from UConn. And they want to pair him up with Jaron Jackson Jr. to move Triple J to the four and have a rim-protecting center like Klingon at the five. Maybe that wouldn't be where they start him, and maybe his NBA career begins off the bench in 15 to 20 minutes, but at least long-term, having Klingon and Triple J as their front court. But the rumor started from the Houston Rockets here, and Kelly Eco, who covers Houston, reported that both general manager Raphael Stone and head coach Ime Adoka are fans of veteran guard Marcus Smart. League sources said, is there a possibility Memphis could entice Houston by offering Smart in addition to the number nine overall pick and future assets to move up and grab Klingon if he isn't already gone? Tennessee's Dalton Connect, who has fans within the Rockets organization, could be available if Houston were to move back. And when you think about the trade that was floated out there, I actually think it makes sense for both sides. Memphis, who desperately wants to add Klingon to this roster to help out Jaron Jackson Jr., moves up six spots to grab him from nine to three. And from the Rockets' perspective, if you're not sold on anyone with the third overall pick, you get a veteran guard that can help you try to make the playoffs this upcoming season in Marcus Smart. He could also help mentor Amen Thompson, Jalen Green, help them grow and get better defensively. Ime Adoka and Smart worked together in Boston when Adoka was the head coach there, so it makes sense for that to fit. And then Houston would also be able to get a solid prospect with the ninth pick, whether it be Dalton Connect, whether it be a Rob Dillingham, whether it be a Ron Holland. Like, there's a lot of different avenue, avenues Houston could go here. And if I'm going to be honest, if the Rockets get offered Smart in the ninth pick for number three, I'd probably take it because if Houston t kept their pick and drafted at third overall – I would be willing to bet it's like a Reed Shepard or a Matas Buzilis type. And I like those two guys, but Marcus Smart can help you more now, and you still get to draft a good young player in the top 10 with the ninth overall pick. That's going to do it for today's video, but make sure you are subscribed. And we told you the four reasons why off the top of the show. I'm not going to waver off these four reasons. We're live for the draft, we're live for free agency, and we have videos on a weekly basis. Hit that sub button and join us here at Chat Sports for the best content on YouTube surrounding the NBA. I'll see you with a video tomorrow. Peace out.